kitchen I know it's been a long time since we've been in the kitchen for an actual full meal but I was very inspired and very excited to whip something up with you guys that's vegan for st. Patrick's Day a little bit of Irish in here my husband's birthday happens to be on st. Patrick's Day and he is also part Irish so I've been really wanting to find some vegan recipes that I can make around this time of the year for us that are right up his alley sometimes it's not exactly the flavor profile that I'm used to or that I'm used to cooking so it's been a really fun experience for me and for some time now we've been making two recipes that I actually found on Pinterest I will link them down below we've tweaked them a little bit ourselves over time so I will also in the description have the recipe how I did it everything in there the first is a vegan cold cannon soup which is basically a potato soup and it has leeks in it, kale, got a little bit of green in there, and then also a pot pie. I've never made a pot pie from scratch. Okay, I shouldn't say completely from scratch because we are using a pre-made pie dough. I feel like this is a positive gateway into so many other things that I can make that are pot pie related or pie related, so this has been a really fun journey. We currently don't have access to the oven, but that's perfectly fine. I'm gonna be using our air fryer instant pot and our stove top for everything that we're making. So if you do have access to an oven, you can definitely do everything in the oven and on the stove. But this is how I'll be showing you guys today with what we have available to us. So let's get going. First I'm going to make the pot pie because that's a little bit more time intensive. And the first step is sauteing the carrot, celery, and garlic together. So I'm going to chop that up. And all the veggies have been pre-washed. Also just pulled out the puff pastry from the fridge because they want you to let it sit for about 15 minutes at room temperature before using it and I was really excited the first time I ever used one of these I didn't even realize that they were vegan but they obviously are it comes with two crusts inside so it works great for the pot pie that you're doing with the crust on the bottom and on top or you could just have two for two regular pies to be able to get these items in the pan, we need to make our vegetable broth because we're gonna end up using a little bit of that in the pan to help the veggies simmer out a little. And we just use the vegetable better than bouillon. We got this big guy from Costco. It calls for one tablespoon per cup. And since we need two cups of vegetable broth, we'll do two tablespoons of the bouillon. So I'm going to turn on my stove top and set it to a 7 out of 10, whatever that ends up being for your heating surface. And then just steal a tablespoon of veggie broth to get us going. After this starts bubbling a little bit, I'll add in all my veggies. Looks like it's about now. Water. And we're going to let those go for seven minutes, stirring occasionally. In the meantime, I will chop up my potato into cubes. 
I'm using a russet potato, but you could use really any kind of potato. the rest of my veggie broth into my veggie. I'm gonna leave that on seven. Keep an eye on this and wait for it to boil. Once it does, I'll add the potatoes and a few other ingredients. In the meantime, I'll prep the pie crust. Have these sitting out here for a little bit. We are simmering, so I'm adding those potatoes, black pepper and thyme, and one tablespoon of liquid aminos, or soy sauce. It's really one to two tablespoons of soy sauce because it really depends on how beefy you sort of want it to taste. I like it to taste a little less so, so I'm just doing one tablespoon, but you could definitely do two if you like that flavor. I'm gonna sprinkle in two tablespoons of flour while making sure that it does not clump up. So it's kind of sifting, if you will. Turn this down to five. I'll see how that goes for the simmering because I don't want it boiling, just simmering. A slight bubble or ripple. And cover it up. I'm just leaving it slightly uncovered. Do 20 minutes and I can still hear it, so I'm going to turn it down. One more. I found this dough to be pretty forgiving. I just take one, unroll it, fit it into the bottom of the pan. My pie dish is a deep dish pie dish, so when I use these, they don't come all the way up to the top. I do look forward to making a recipe from scratch that I can adjust the proper amount for how large my pan is, but for this one, I just fit mine right into the bottom while being careful not to puncture it with my nails, but also not completely pushing this lip at the top all the way against it, because after I add my ingredients and then put the second one on top, I'm gonna tuck it behind this one to make the lip out of that. To finish the pot pie filling, we just need to make the tofu, and the original recipe calls for firm silken tofu, but they say that really anything will work. Whenever I bought silken tofu, I always ends up being in a box like this one in dry storage, as opposed to like sitting in the liquid in this plastic container. But as noted, anything will work. I haven't frozen this or anything. I'm just gonna open it and drain it. If you're using the silken tofu, there's not a lot to drain. As you can tell, there's not a lot of liquid. But if you're using the other tofu, definitely make sure to drain it. You don't need to press it, just drain it. And for the portion sizes that I do, especially in my pie pan here, I end up cutting the original recipe in half. So whenever I make this, I double the tofu recipe, allowing me to use the full block of tofu. And then after making the crumbles, I just set half of it aside, and I use that on a different day in tacos or something. So I'll just crumble it up. I'm gonna add the salt, pepper, garlic powder, and thyme to the tofu and a tablespoon of liquid aminos or soy sauce. So our veggies look like they're done. I'm gonna transfer this into this bowl so I can heat up the tofu. A little bit of sesame seed oil. Throw in our tofu. And I want to keep stirring the tofu just like everything else, don't want anything to stick, but this will take about 10 minutes. The 
tofu's done, I'll put about half of it in a container and the rest right into the veggie mix. I'm just going to spoon this in while making sure not to get anything behind the pie crust. I'm gonna flatten this all out and add my second crust of dough. So I'm just gonna literally set it right on top and then do the best that I can to put the edges behind the one that's already in here and then just pinch everything together. about the edges being perfect because it kind of bakes into itself anyways and just evens out and even if it is a little bit off or funky it just it adds character you know step before going in the air fryer you want to get a nut milk that is unsweetened and unflavored I'm using soy here and if you are lucky enough to have a brush in your kitchen you want to brush that on top I do not have a brush so I'm just gonna use a spoon <laughs> so I just got a little bit I just kind of go across this helps it not burn. I never use any foil or anything along the edges. We're going to do 20 minutes at 350 in the air fryer. And our air fryer has a couple different settings. I always use the bake option that doesn't have the fan next to it when I'm doing this and I'm going to rotate the pie about halfway through. So I'll set my timer for 10 minutes switch it, and then it should be ready to go. So our soup we're gonna fully do in the instant pot. I'm gonna chop up some garlic and then the leeks. We just need this portion of it here. Throw in a little bit of veggie broth and get that sauteing. I did already rinse off the leeks. I'm going to rinse them off again because it's very easy for the dirt to get in here and get stuck. Who in there making my eyes water just like a regular onion? Turn my instant pot on to saute and give it two tablespoons of water. Maybe a third tablespoon, but it's heating up pretty fast, so I'm gonna add the garlic and leeks in there. I'm gonna give this maybe five to seven minutes. And then I started chopping up the potatoes just that I didn't run out of time. I have learned from past recipes that I don't want to just go step one, two, three, four all the way to the end without prepping in advance or planning ahead because then sometimes it's like we'll heat something for two minutes and then add a bunch of stuff that I haven't chopped yet. So I've got this going. Got these leeks and onions steaming up the place. 
guys. They're definitely ready for the veggie broth. So I did the same thing that I did for the last veggie broth. This one calls for three cups. So three cups of water and then three tablespoons of the better than bouillon. Plus some potatoes. Adding salt, pepper, nutritional yeast, and onion powder. Gonna close up the Instant Pot, close the little venting guy, do the soup setting, which automatically goes for 10 minutes, so I'm just gonna do that and let it do the full natural release. And I've already prepped this cashew and water item. It's half cup cashew, half cup water that I just blitzed in the Vitamix blender. That's gonna go in this afterwards along with the kale. So I'm gonna get that kale chop in and then everything will be prepped and ready to go. So it'll be just an easy combining and mixture when this bad boy's done. or spinach for this stuff and I like chopping it pretty darn fine because I'm not a huge fan of the big pieces of veggie in the soup so however you'd like to chop it. The Instant Pot has finished its natural release. It smells pretty good. Gonna mash it up. You could also use an immersion blender if you wanted to. Add our chopped kale. Got that cashew mixture off to the side. I'm gonna add that. have it we've got the pie the crust is nice and flaky and as you can tell how it went around it almost looks like I braided it in some spots but I mean you guys saw me do it I really just tucked it in there then we've got the soup it's so good nice and warm you can practically serve the soup right away the pot pie though you can serve it right away it tastes really good nice and hot but if you do give it a little bit more time it's a lot easier to cut it will stay in a pie shape for you but right when it comes out of the air fryer or the oven it's gonna fall apart on you more bon appetit hope you guys enjoyed the video i hope you have or had a wonderful saint patrick's day if you enjoyed this video like and subscribe i have new videos coming out on tuesdays and fridays so we will see you then have a great rest of your day whatever day it is bye so, it's St. Patrick's Day, maybe you've made your meal, you're ready for a drink, what are you gonna have? Everyone goes for Guinness, right? For my husband, on St. Patrick's Day, that is something that he has to have, his Guinness beer. It's just tradition, that's an acquired taste, if you ask me. But, when we went vegan, that was one thought that we have. Hopefully Guinness is vegan, hopefully that's something we can still have. So, I wanted to throw in a little bit about this. A, obviously, since I've got it in my hand, Yes, it is vegan, but I was at the grocery store today and I wanted to look it up and just make sure. On the front it says stout, smooth, and creamy, and anything that says creamy, my red flag goes up. And I'm just like, you know what, I need to make sure again. And I want to read you guys what I found because, very interesting to me. Guinness.com, frequently asked questions. Is Guinness vegan friendly? Yes. 
Our new state-of-the-art filtration process no longer uses Isinglass. Sounds like Isengard. <laughs> So the ingredients in Guinness Drought, Guinness Extra Stout, and Guinness Foreign Extra Stout are now suitable for vegans. Yay!